Think analytics is just for data folks? In this video, I explore three different ways that non-analytical professionals can start incorporating analytical thinking methods to their work right away. You just gotta analyze stuff. Hey, what's up? Thanks for tuning in. My name is Matt Bratton, founder of tmbanalytics.com, your analytics career headquarters, here with another video to help you learn how to leverage analytics in your career. Now, if you're looking to get in, move up, or just learn more about being analytical, you can take your first step right now by subscribing to my channel where I drop new content every week. All right, so I've done a good bit of guest lecturing and running workshops over the years, and when I've done this, there's always some students or professionals who are in attendance who have absolutely zero interest in analytics. It's not necessarily because they don't see the value in it, rather, there's usually just this idea that certain roles or certain fields simply don't need to know this stuff. But I'm here to tell you that everyone can benefit from being more analytically minded. And if you don't believe me, go take a quick look at just about any job description that's out in the world these days and you are almost certain to come across some reference to analytical thinking under the desired skills section. Now. I know this may read like a new way of saying you need critical thinking skills, which every job description used to have, but given the growth of analytics as a field, this means that if you're ignoring this criteria, you're falling behind and it's becoming more of an expectation than not. So with that, let's just go ahead and jump right in and talk about the first way that you can start being more analytical on the job, even if you're not an analyst. So what is this thing number one? Exploding numbers. No, it's not what you think, or maybe it is, I actually can't tell. But what I mean by exploding numbers is no matter what role you work in, there's a very high likelihood that you're going to encounter numbers somehow, some way. If you're in HR, you're gonna be dealing with salary data, headcount data. Marketing, you're gonna be dealing with ad spend and other things. Or let's just go crazy, say maybe you own a restaurant. You're gonna be watching your revenue come in every day, right? So it doesn't matter what you do, you can probably come up with a few examples of numbers that are gonna show up around you. You're gonna encounter them on a day-to-day -day basis. So where's the pyrotechnics? I was told there would be pyrotechnics. All right, fine, let me show you. Okay, so let's go back to that HR person who's looking at salary data. Now, watch this. What's one way that you can arrive at total salaries? Boom, you add up total salaries by department. Marketing looking at ad spend, boom, the sum of cost by vendor. Restaurant, looking at revenue, boom, sum of customer receipts. Okay, hold up, what's the point here? The point is that nearly any number that you encounter can be traced back to its component parts. And what you're usually seeing is just a roll up of some kind. So further, those next level numbers are also likewise made up of smaller numbers still. So with each of these numbers, they can form interrelationships with one another. And where this really starts to become interesting is when you switch from simple summing to multipliers and start seeing everything as a rate times volume situation. So let's take revenue, which is a perfect example of rate times volume. So one month revenue is a hundred bucks and the next month it's 110 bucks and you get asked, what happened? Resist the urge here to turn on the elevator analysis machine and say, well, revenue is up 10%. Rather, you could take those numbers, blow them up and see that your hundred dollar revenue is comprised of 10 $10 widgets and the $110 a month is 11 $10 widgets. Now, what actually happened was revenue increased because volume increased by 10%. Where did the increased volume come from? Was it expected? Can we do it again? I could do a whole video on this specific topic and I don't know, maybe I will. But for now, when you see a number, think about the different components that make up that number and you'll start to see and think a little differently. Dare I say, more analytically, all right? so about what otherwise might be just some passing number. Okay, ready. Numero dos, numero dos, what is it? You might be familiar with the term QBQ or question behind the question. Well, I wanna talk about the SBD, the system behind the data. And what this means, it's, it's kind of similar to the exploding number concept, but when you look at various data points and you understand they originate from somewhere, right? These aren't just made up numbers, hopefully, unless you're in sales. <laughs> Sorry, sales, you know I love you. But seriously, data has to come from somewhere and the extent to which you have an understanding of where certain numbers originate, the better you'll start to develop what I like to refer to as spatial awareness of your data infrastructure. How is this analytical? 
Well, it's not necessarily, but it's kind of like a gateway to more analytical thinking because let's take, for example, website impressions. So you've got a dashboard and that's one of the metrics that's highlighted, impressions. So you see that number and the first thing that you should do is obviously imagine it blowing up, right? We've already talked about that, boom. So those are eyeballs. Those eyeballs, those impressions, they came from somewhere, but where? How do you figure out where? So go back to the source. Maybe it's Google Analytics. So you trace this number back to a view or a report within Google Analytics, and then you understand, hey, that number is comprised of eyeballs who hit your site. They had to come from somewhere. They came from different places. So how do you know that? How is the system configured to capture that information? Or is it? When they hit your page, what are they doing now? Where do they go? So you start to see what we're doing here. We're, we're exploring relationships and interdependencies of those initial data points and starting to visualize not just some number on a, you know, a visualization, but actually people taking a journey on our website, leaving us clues about what they're doing. Now you can start asking smarter questions about, well, what are we capturing and what are we doing with what we're capturing? And if we're not capturing something, how can we start? And also what's the value that would come from doing that? All good questions, but you're not going to know to ask unless you explore. So, all right, time for tip number three. Now, if you've taken the first two tips to heart, you start to look at these numbers as explosive, and then you see their components more clearly. And then when you're looking at data and you start thinking about the systems that they originated in, well, now you're positioned to deploy the secret sauce of any analyst, and that is simply being curious. And what I mean by this is, in order for those first two tips to really take hold, you have to believe there's value in exploring those deeper things. So what do those number components actually mean? What other data points are available in that source system? Just being curious here is gonna take you on little journeys throughout the day where you can focus less on the data and more on what the data represents, which is often easier to grasp than just numbers on a chart. And from there, you can start asking those smarter questions we keep talking about that are gonna to lead to better data and better analyses that I also talk about. So, And what this also does is present opportunities for leveling up infrastructure, leveling up your tracking capabilities, identifying gaps in your current data collection, et cetera. And this is because sometimes when all you have are analysts as the only people who are looking this deeply at the data, the harder questions that should come from the business never actually get asked because they tend to stick to what's familiar and what they're being fed and that's to no one's benefit. So the more comfortable you get as a non-analyst with the systems, with the numbers, the more you'll start to advocate for better things and better things will come. <laughs> All right, so we looked at exploding numbers, system awareness, and general curiosity, all three things that non-data people can employ to start you down a path of improved analytical processes. So I hope you got some value from this video. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.